So many of you asked about what do I do with this pancake maker in card making? And so today we're going to find out. Let's play with this together. Thanks for joining me today on my gentastic journey, including card crafting. All right, so my pancake maker. Let's see what we can do with this and how much fun we can have. So this is a very inexpensive pancake maker I picked up a long time ago and you guys all saw it in my craft room renovation video. I also picked up these plastic, sh this shrink plastic kit and it's like shrinky dinks for those of you that are a little bit older like me. Uh, those were things that we played with a lot as kids and so I bought some of those and we'll see if that will work because the instructions show that it has to be on a pretty low setting. So we'll see if those work, but I cut some out with some of my dies just to get some different shapes. And I have some little ones, some bigger ones, and I thought we'd play along with those. They do have a kind of a shiny side on one side and a matte side on the other, so we'll see if that also makes a difference. I do have some Versamark ink pads. One is Versamark and one is Versamark Sparkle, and then I just have a Versamark reinker. And then I bought some ultra thick embossing powder just in case we needed a little extra. And I did see a video on this about a year ago, which is when I bought this. If I can find that video, I will link it below because she is the one who piqued my interest, and then it's one of those things I bought it and then I never never did anything with it. So we're going to have fun with it today. And I do have a bunch of things I have that I thought we could use with this, like some of these wood pieces. And then I have these happy birthday sentiments that are also made out of that chipboard. And I thought we could make those look pretty and shiny. <laughs> And so I'm checking, I've got this plugged in and it's warmed up. I also got some parchment paper and this is just plain old cooking parchment paper. It was towards the end of my roll, which was perfect. So I cut out some circles with a circle die that I had that matched exactly the inside of the pancake maker. And because we're at the end of my parchment paper, they're a little bit curled up. We'll make them work and that will keep our project from sticking to the bottom. Now I do not use this for food. So this is strictly for crafts. I think I paid five or six dollars for it. Okay, so I'm putting some embossing ink on this and I put it right on to the pancake maker and you'll see I don't do that again in the future just because I'm not really sure then how much time it's had in there and I'm just pouring a little bit of embossing powder onto the project. These are all my Lindy embossing powders. So just taking some different colors that I have and trying to just see what happens <laughs> when I do this because this is all about experimentation and the hope is is that we'll have some cute little embellishments to go onto our projects and this is raspberry lemonade is the color that I just used. And I'll link these below in the description box in case you are looking for some embossing powders. I love Lindy's. They have tons and tons of colors. They have shimmery ones. They have not shimmery ones. So they have a lot. Uh, if you've ever been on their website, I will leave their web website linked in the description box. So here I am putting some of that ultra thick embossing powder on there. It says it's clear. I'm not so sure now, but <laughs> it seems a little cloudy to me when we use it in this project and you see that in a minute. So I waited 90 seconds, which is kind of what you wait for a pancake. These are definitely not pancakes, but I took it off and I was like, wait a minute, what is that? It said it shrunk 20%, but I think it's to 20% of the original size. So it's quite a bit smaller than it was when we started. So next we'll try a wood piece, this little wood heart. And this time I'm going to put some of my, my embossing ink reinker on here. And I'm just going to use a little tool to move that ink around so we have it everywhere. And I think I found that I don't think you need this much of the embossing ink on there. I think it's fine if you just use your ink pad. So good to know. So you guys don't have some of the same mistakes I did. Uh, I just don't think it made that much of a difference. And here again, I'm just going to put some colors on here. I'm just playing with this. I don't have anything really in mind to use this for, but I really love some of the colors I have from Lindy's. So I'm using some of my favorites on here, mostly pastels. I must have been in a pastel mood because a lot of these are pastel. This one is an orange color. It looks white or off-white in the camera, but it actually comes out more of a creamsicle color. I think that's the name of it as well. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave that in there for 30 seconds and check on it. I thought I might be able to kind of move it around because I put so much embossing ink on there, but it really didn't do anything to make the project look pretty. So here's where I kind of make a mistake. 
I'm like, you know what? I think it needs more powder. So I put a whole bunch of that clear on there and we'll see in a minute that really didn't help the situation. So here I'm gonna take all the extra embossing powder off from around our little teeny tiny shrinky dink or whatever they're calling them nowadays. And I'm gonna use some of my snips and just try and get some of this ink that is around the edges of my little flower. I do break one of the petals, so I just kind of stop. <laughs> but we'll see. I fixed that a little bit at the end. All right, so here this is looking good. It's kind of boily. It kind of got rid of all my pretty colors because that clear embossing powder I think is more creamy than clear. I may try it on another project to see if maybe it's just because we're using the pancake maker, but I was a little disappointed in how muted those colors became. Okay, next I'm just going to use some some dyes that I bought cut out, and these are just, you know, on cardstock, so they're not fancy or anything like that, and hopefully we won't burn them right <laughs> but I do want to see what will happen if they shrivel up if they get warped or if they look great so that's kind of what all this playing is about and I think I've decided that I kind of like this concept and I might have fun with a lot of this for just little embellishments especially these thinner ones like this one here it wouldn't take a lot of, of dimension up but it man they're shiny they're shimmery they are colorful so why not and and you could incorporate your color scheme from your cards and make those really, really cute. The woman I was following was using this for scrapbooking. I just found her like one day, and it was such a long time ago. I hope I can find that video again. She was good. You should Google the pancake maker in card making, and you might be able to find some videos as well, because I don't think this is a new novel idea. I did see someone that sparked the interest. She used a lot of big pieces of embossing powder, and so that was something that I just don't have. I don't have other than the extra thick embossing powder. I bought to do this project but I do have these little teeny tiny either plastic or glass beads I don't remember when I purchased them but I was like what happens if I throw a couple of these on there will they melt you know gonna be cute is it gonna give it a little bit more dimension and you'll see that I put these on here and then I'm gonna heat it up a little bit again and they do not melt so they must be glass beads once the embossing powder gets heated up to a point it actually dries so they didn't stick all that well either because I had already put this in there I think if I had put those glass beads on at the beginning it might have had a little bit better outcome all right so I keep leaving it in there thinking something <laughs> different is going to happen but you'll see that not really much changes the good news is that it's, it's hard as a rock so here's my happy birthday chipboard piece I'm just gonna again press it into that embossing ink or some Mark ink. And this time I'm gonna use, I was gonna use a color, but I decided I'm just gonna use my iridescent embossing powder and see what that does. And it actually, it's one of my favorites because it did create almost like a, a shadow background because of the way the embossing powder melted. It made me think that I wonder if I even need the embossing ink. Cause again, I saw this video about a year ago. I don't recall if she actually used embossing ink or not. So you can see here, I start to put just embossing powder on and no ink. But then I get like, uh-oh, maybe I should have put <laughs> the ink on there. So I chicken out and I take all the powder off of it. And then I do end up putting some Versamark ink on there. And this time I used the non-shiny side of the shrink paper. I keep wanting to call it shrinky dinks. I don't, I don't remember the name of the paper, but you saw it at the beginning. So I'm just going to put a little bit of color here and there on this one. At this point, I'm just curious to see. So this is a pretty, pretty big piece that I die cut out oval shape with some cute little edges. And I just want to see how much it's going to shrink down because it does shrink down to 20% of its original size. But I do want to see, does it shrink up and it stays flat or does it? curl up at all. That first one we got, it didn't seem to curl up, but it also is kind of a hot mess. So I'm trying to be a little bit more careful about not getting so much of the embossing powder all around the edges so that we don't have the same thing with the little flower where there was so much ink that was attached to it. And with those delicate petals, it was a little bit too much. So here I'm putting that creamsicle color on as well. I think I'm going to get a little bit bolder with some darker colors. I have multiples of the same color. So sometimes if I pull them out and they have a thing still on them and I don't don't use it but this is a like a, a silver blue color slam dunk silver putting a little bit of pink so it does use 
quite a bit of embossing powder, I would say, and maybe you don't need to use as much as I'm using. Usually when you do a project, most of the embossing powder comes back off of your project. You just scoop it back up into your little embossing powder container, but in this case, you don't do that. But I still didn't use a terrible amount in this little session. So I'm checking on it and I'm just curious like what happens. So here I open it up and you can see it's like, it's doing what it did when I was a kid, like a shrinky dink that you watch in the oven. It's changing shape and I'm just hoping that it goes back to a shape that I can use because that's all kind of shriveled up and not sure what that's going to do for me. Then I was going to get a tool and see if I could help with it, but then it was kind of doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So <laughs> Those of us that are sciencey, this is kind of a cool little project, but I don't know if this was what exactly I was looking for for a card making session, but it's kind of an interesting little thing. I am wondering if there are thicker shrink papers out there that you could use that would be able to handle this amount of heat because I'm sure this pancake maker is much hotter than 325 degrees, which is what it suggests on the packaging. It suggests you put it in the oven at 325. So while we're waiting, I'm going to take out the that other little flower and see if we can do something with that one. And I'm going to do kind of a similar look to what I did with the first one. I'm just going to put some on the outer petals, some on the inner petals. And I'm looking at this blob of who knows what in there. And I'm like, I think I'm just going to leave it there because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that thing. So <laughs> we'll play around with this one and see what we do here until we take the other one out. Yeah, I think I decided to go ahead and take it out because it's a blob of color and mixed embossing powder. So we'll let that dry and see what happens with it. But meanwhile, we'll take a look at this pretty flower. I did the shiny side on this one and I'm using that creamsicle color and the raspberry lemonade color was the pink. And then this is just a white embossing powder. And then I decided to sprinkle a little bit that of that iridescent one kind of all over it. All right, let's hope this shrinky dink does a little bit better <laughs> than the other one did. I keep peeking to check on it and it's looking better than the last one. So maybe the trick is to have smaller shapes. Isn't that pretty? I think that one's actually going to turn out usable, which is good. We should at least get one thing that's usable. No, we have several of them. This is one of my, it's the similar to the last one we used that was a, a die cut. And we're going to try the Versamark Dazzle. I actually purchased this when I was looking for a re-inker re for my Versamark clear embossing ink pad. And I thought, Versamark Dazzle, that sounds kind of fun. So I purchased that and I thought it would really be really nice for like a watermark look. And I'm just throwing a little bit of powder on this one as well. And these actually worked really well. So I don't even think you'd do the shrinky dink looking things at all. The other ones, they're neat because they would act like more like gems and they're hard like a gem you'd, you'd, embellishment you'd put on a project. But these come out just have a little shinier coating and some pretty colors. And then here I'm putting a few little sparkles on it. And this actually looks really pretty when it's done. So now I'm getting curious. So why can I not get the shrinky dink things to work? So I cut off just a couple of random pieces from what I cut the flowers out of and I'm like maybe I just put it on there and see if without any embossing ink or powder what happens to it. And I'm waiting for this last one to finish up. We'll take that one off. I thought that one came out really pretty too. And I'll show you them all at the end. This one I just decided to put a little bit of powder on there. No embossing ink on it. Just the embossing powder. And it's not really because I think I'm going to use it. I just want to see what happens. Okay, and we can see that this is a hot mess. <laughs> It is just shrinky dinking all over the place and it's not anything that will be usable. Uh, it looked like a caterpillar of some sort. So then I cut out one more piece and I'm just going to put it on there. No embossing ink, no embossing powder, and I just want to see what happens to it. And you can see it's just shriveling up. So I'm not sure if I bought the wrong kind of shrinking, shrinky dink paper. It gets hard as a rock pretty quickly. So I would say that that did not work for me, but I would say that maybe if there is some thicker paper that can take the higher heat, it might work out. But let's take a look at this project and what we actually got from, from it. This is my first little flower-ish looking thing and just Chip took off some of the little extra paint that was on there, but that's really pretty and shiny. That was the <laughs> shape. Uh, it was a shrinky dink one. This is the one shrinky dink that actually is cute. It's just its petals are turned out, so it would be pretty thick if you were going to put it on a card that you put it put in the mail, so you wouldn't want to do that, but it's a cute little flower that you could put onto a card. And then this is that wood chip piece. And I'm just going to cut some of that extra melted embossing powder off of the back of it or the sides of it. And this is actually not bad either. I think if I had poured all of that thick embossing powder on there, I think that one would have come out a little bit cuter. So 
I think that the chipped wood pieces would work out just fine. The shrinky dink didn't really work for me except for that one small flower there, which was the largest flower. And then those those little flowers die cuts that I purchased, so they're just a thicker cardstock. And then this was the chipped wood uh, happy birthday sentiment. And you could see there that the iridescent powder that I used went behind it, so it made a pretty impression. So here I'm kind of laying them out so you can see them a little bit better. So what do you think? Is this something that you would purchase? Might have fun with? I think that one came out really pretty with the iridescence behind the wording. And that one is pretty too. I had the little gems that I, those little glass beads that I put on there. And that one also came out real pretty. This is the only shrinky dink that really worked, but she's kind of curled up. So again, would be significantly pushed off of your page. And then here's the chipboard that uh, looked okay. And then <laughs> that's a shrinky dink that used to look like that shape. And now it's kind of a blob and it's pushed out a little bit. This is the first flower I did. Um, actually, this is the bigger of the flowers. I think the other one was the smaller of the flowers, the one that came out correctly. And I'm trying to cut off some of the extra paint, but I re there's really no saving this piece. But I do think that those flowers worked out okay. So I don't know if the, the shape needs to be really small. And that would be maybe the trick to using the shrinky dink type paper. And I didn't spend a terrible amount on the shrinky dig paper. I bought probably whatever was cheapest on Amazon because I wanted to try this out on this with my pancake maker. So I didn't uh, didn't look for something that was going to be super effective and super thick or anything like that. And I think hindsight, that might have been the trick. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something you would do? Thanks for those of you that mentioned what is that pancake maker for in your craft room renovation video. And I'll link that above if you wanted to see that video. It's one of my most popular videos. Thanks for joining me today. And if you would, please click the like button if you found this interesting or entertaining or helpful. And I, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you would, you can click the notification bell and that will let you know every time I create a new content, which is twice weekly. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.